In this screencast video, I'm going to show you how to rotate an image, resize it, and you've already learned a little bit of the crop technique. So I am going to go ahead and crop this image. Um, I have a little bit of a section on there that I don't want, and I'm going to not um, have the overlay show just because I'm just using the regular crop function here. So um, I just want to get rid of that black area from my scanner bed kind of distracts me a little bit. So there we go. Now I'm pretty zoomed in here. This is a large image. As you can see, I can use my slider bars here or on the bottom to kind of maneuver on the image. But I don't like seeing only a part of my image, especially when I'm trying to work on the entire image. So I will use um, my keyboard shortcut to zoom out, and that is Command minus. And I can do that a couple times until I see the entire image. And to zoom in is Control plus, and that's very helpful as well, uh, especially when we come to editing tiny parts of the image, you'll want to definitely zoom in. So I'm just going to hit Control minus again so that I can see my entire image. I, I do want to rotate this image because it is meant to be a vertical image and not um, horizontal image and it kind of just distracts me artistically if I'm not looking at things the way that I want. So in order to rotate the image I'm going to go up to the top and I apologize that you can't see it at the top of my screen but at the top of your screen you'll see um, an image option and then image rotation and obviously the 180 degrees would flip this so that the cart is now on the bottom. The 90 degree clockwise um, will change it again to this way, which would make it upside down. I don't want that. And I'm just clipping back my history so you can see what I'm coming from. So I do want the 90 degrees counterclockwise. And as you can see, it does cut my image off a little bit more so I'm going to use that command minus to zoom out because I like to I like to have space around here when I'm working with cropping and editing and that sort of thing. What I need to also do is change the size of this image okay? because you're going to need to do that for your um, badge assignment. In order to do that I need to go up to the top of my screen and choose image and I'm going to choose image size. Okay. Now the image size is going to give you the size exactly in inches, which here is 8.64 um, inches by 12.9 inches. Now if I were to try to print this out, it would carry over a regular page. And when we're working with our badges, you have a very specific size to be using. So, um, if you don't see inches here, if it's by pixels, make sure it's in inches. Okay, it's much easier to, to visualize that. You can also change the resolution. Now at 300 resolution, I like that because the higher the resolution, the crisper your image will be when you print it. It will, of course, take up more memory space. Um, but I would leave it, I would leave it at a high resolution. Um, what we have here is we have constrained proportions, meaning that if I change something here, it's going to automatically change here. And that is especially important if we don't want to cut out parts of our image. But we have to make sure that we are fitting the proper badge size the way we want. So if my badge were, you know, a 5 by 7, which it is smaller than that, but if it were a 5 by 7, it wouldn't let me get exactly a 5 by 7 because this is linked. So you'd have to click that off and then you could go ahead and change it to whichever you want and then you can hit OK. Um, this may have cut off some of my my image so if, I, if you do not like that you might have to go back and crop um, but if this is the size you want of this image, a 5 by 7 that's a, a better image to print and this will be exactly what you see when you print if you print at a 5 by 7.